If you ever get a chance to pass nearby a high voltage transmission line at night, you will observe a faint violet glow around the conductors. Have you noticed it? It is called Corona effect. And why it happens? I'll tell you, but before that, let's take over an easy concept. We already know that there is an electrostatic force between two charges, right? It can be either repulsive or attractive, doesn't matter. But the point is, there is a force between two charges without being in contact. Because we have an intuition that if we have to apply a force on something, we have to physically touch it. But charges are exerting force on each other without being in contact. How? How is that happening? Well, this was a big concern for many scientists, but one of the famous scientists known as Michael Faraday told that any charge creates an electric field around it. And because of the interaction of the electric field and the charge, this force is generated. So the electrostatic force is the result of interaction of this field and the charge. So how we can define electric field? It is the region around a charge where its force can be felt. Now I have a very simple problem for you. Here is a question. We have a charge say X and at some distance R from the X, there is another charge Q. And we have been given a table here. It is saying that if we are keeping two coulomb of charge in place of Q, the force on it is 40 Newton. For four coulomb, it is 80 Newton and for six coulomb, it is 120 Newton. Now you have to calculate what will be the force at the same point if we are keeping seven coulomb or eight coulomb of charge. Forget about electrostatics. I think you can solve this using unitary method. What you have to do is, you have to calculate force on one coulomb of charge, right? Which is 20 Newton. And after you have calculated force on one coulomb, it is very easy to calculate the force on seven coulomb of charge, which is 140 Newton. And similarly on eight coulomb of charge, right? And if the question has been asking like, find the force on nine coulomb of charge, 10 coulomb, or even 20 coulomb, 50 coulomb, you, you can easily find it, right? Now comes the electrostatics. Let's say we have a positive charge Q and at some distance R from it, there is a one coulomb of charge. What will be the force exerted by Q on one coulomb? First of all, both are positive charges and that's why there will be a force of repulsion. And what will be its magnitude? Well, from Coulomb's law, we know that F is equal to KQ and Q2 by R square. This is the force between two charges, right? So from that, we can write the force on one coulomb of charge here as KQ into one by R square, correct? Which will finally be KQ by R square. Now let's make a circle here. This circle is of radius R. And since it is a circle, every point on the circumference is at same distance from the center. That means if we keep one coulomb of charge at any point on the circumference, it will be at same distance from Q, correct? And it will experience a force radially outwards, right? And the magnitude will be KQ by R square on each of the charges. If we are taking one coulomb of charge and keeping them on the circumference of this circle, the force on all of them will be kq by r square. Now, this is a 2D model. We are experiencing things in two dimension. Let's see in three dimension space. Now, imagine a spherical surface around the charge. This is an imaginary spherical surface and at the center of which there is a charge q. Let's say there are infinite number of points on this spherical surface 
and at few of the points we are keeping one coulomb of charge how much force they will experience it will be same k q by r square right every point on this sphere is at a distance r from the center that means if we keep one coulomb of charge anywhere on this surface it will experience same force correct so what we have on this imaginary surface one coulomb of charge is experiencing a force of k q by r square what will be the force on 5 coulomb of charge it will be force on 1 coulomb of charge multiplied by 5 right and the expression is k q by r square into 5 and if we apply coulomb's law here then also we'll get the same expression correct now let's bring back our imaginary sphere on this spherical surface one coulomb of charge is experiencing k q by r square of force so we can generalize that if we have a charge q on this surface it will experience a force of k q by r square into q right force on one coulomb multiplied by the magnitude of charge so you can see that around the given charge the force on one coulomb of charge is really helpful in the calculations right i'll give you an example here let's say you have to purchase rice and you went to the shopkeeper and you will ask bhaiya chawal kaise di what he will say bhaiya 50 rupaye kilo what does that mean this value tells you that what is the price of 1 kg of rice right and from that you can estimate how expensive or how cheap is that item right similarly in electrostatics we find the force on 1 coulomb of charge and from that we can estimate how strong or how weak is the electric field at that point since it is that important we give it a name it is called as electric field intensity the force applied by a charge on 1 coulomb of charge at any point is the electric field intensity at that point we denote this electric field intensity as e so we can write e as k q by r square right that's what we calculated this is the force on one coulomb of charge correct now instead of one coulomb if we have a charge q at the same position what will be the force on that charge very basic equation we are using it multiple times f is equal to force on one coulomb into q and we can write it as f is equal to q e correct e is the force on one coulomb and q is the magnitude of the charge correct hope you understood it now let's say we have to calculate electric field intensity at any point a around a charge how we can do that we can place a charge q at that point and calculate the value of e by dividing the force on the charge by the magnitude of the charge right e is basically force per unit charge so we can write e as f by q correct and by that we can say that the unit of e should be newton per coulomb which is actually its si unit but this formula is written in a different form in your textbooks according to this formula which is written in your textbooks the charge which we are using to find electric field intensity should be very very small limit q tends to 0 which means q should be very near to 0 and we call it test charge which is by convention positive in nature but the question for you is why q should be very very small why this test charge is taken as very small think about it and drop the comments i'll discuss it in later videos for now remember that using this test charge we can find how strong is the electric field at any point as well as its direction and actually there is a way to represent the direction of electric field at any point around the charge and we call them 
electric field lines and what are they let's say you have a positive charge plus q what will be the direction of force on a test charge if you place it around this it will be radially outwards right because test charge is positive in nature and if you place it near another positive charge it will experience a force of repulsion and that's it this is the representation of electric field lines for a positive charge now how will the electric field lines look for a negative charge simple it will be radially inwards right because if you place a test charge near a negative charge it will experience a force of attraction towards the negative charge right so basically electric field lines are the imaginary lines which represent the direction of force which test charge will experience around them hope you understood it now if a positive charge and a negative charge are placed close to each other how will these lines look like this because we know that electric field lines for a positive charge is radially outwards for a single positive charge they are radially outwards and for a single negative charge the lines are radially inwards and if we place them close to each other the lines will look like this so basically we can write that an electric field line emerges from the positive charge and ends at the negative charge and if we have to find the direction of electric field at any point what we have to do is draw a tangent at that point and that tangent will represent the direction of electric field at that point now if you notice electric field intensity has a magnitude as well as direction what does that imply electric field intensity is a vector quantity correct and if we resolve and find the resultant of all the electric field vectors around these two charges we will get a picture like this this is the actual electric field vector which starts from positive and ends at negative now let's increase the level what if we have a material or a medium in between these charges how is it going to affect the electric field intensity we know that the material is neutral in nature right number of electrons is equal to number of protons inside this medium now because of the presence of a positive and a negative charge there will be a separation of charges inside this material right protons will lean towards negative charge and electrons will lean towards positive charge but they cannot separate out of the atoms so they will form local clouds inside the material and each of these clouds will have a separation of positive and negative charges and this local separation of charges is called polarization of the material now each cloud can generate its own electric field from positive to negative right and if we combine the electric fields of all the clouds there will be a net electric field ep which is going to oppose our actual electric field e right what does that mean this means that there is an opposition to our actual electric field e because of which there will be a reduction in the net electric field right so we can say that if we place a medium in between the positive and negative charges there is a reduction in electric field intensity and this property of a medium is called as permittivity permittivity is actually a measure of the polarizability of a material now if we have more permittivity of the material there will be more polarization and if there is more polarization there will be more reduction in electric field right and this is what i was discussing 
in previous video when I made a video on electrostatic force. So permittivity is a resistance to electric field or it is an obstruction to the electric field due to polarization of the material. Now comes our question. Why do we see a faint violet glow around a high voltage transmission line? So the reason for that is ionization of air surrounding the transmission lines due to very high electric field. Because a high voltage line contains immense amount of charges and because of that there is a very high electric field around the conductors which causes the ionization of air and because of which we see this faint violet glow. And this effect is called as Corona effect. And if you want a detailed video on Corona effect, drop the comment. I'll make another video on this. Till then, stay safe and take care. Now, if this video looks interesting to you, just like, share and subscribe and hit the bell icon. For any queries, you can drop a mail at slidescreen at gmail.com.